Hi, I'm Al Jadeke. I'm one of the three instructors in the engineering design program. Today what we're going to do is work with some more of the statics too, taking a look at uh, stress problems and using the correct documentation that we've looked at previously. So specifically, I want you to use the four-part problem solving process. So right here, sample problem is that we have a figure over here behind me that shows a rubber washer and this type of a washer is used in motor mounts so that when the motor is uh, going through some uh, impact uh, it settles everything down. So you're to find the compressive stress that's in that rubber material. We want to find out just how much stress is on it and that can help us select the type of rubber that we're going to use. So, as we take a look at our four-part problem solving, step one here is to take a look at finding our unknown. And in this case, we're supposed to find the compressive stress. So right here in the problem is the compressive stress. So we have S sub C in this case. And we, we say this is compressive stress, so we're saying it just like that. It's just written that S is the main feature in our formulas. So now that we understand what we're looking for, we want to try and take a look at anything that we know. So in step two, finding our known information, uh, we're going to be able to take a look at the force here is given as 800 pounds. So we can come in here and fill in this 800 pounds. I also have an area to work with. And in this case, I have a hollow ring in my area. Uh, so what I usually call this is a hollow circle. If we take a look at the circle from above, our area here is right there. This is what's being compressed by the object, the motor above, and from below it's being compressed by the frame that it's on in the car. So this 800 pounds is coming down, it's also coming up from the bottom. Again, this is a two-force member. It's being squeezed though in this case, rather than like in the tensile problem, we were trying to stretch the object. Tension and compression are equal and opposite in, in uh, how we solve these problems. Whereas shear, another problem we'll work on later, is going to be a ripping effect. So here we're just trying to make the material squeezed shut. So some of the different uh, other variables that we have is that we're going to use a capital D for the large diameter. So bring that capital D over here and that's four inches. The inside hole is going to be a small d and that will be the inside diameter. Now some people use d sub o and d sub i I have enough little subscripts that will go with the capital D outside diameter, small d on the inside diameter. The last variable that we have is actually the material thickness, which is 0.25 a quarter of an inch. So little t is equal to 0.25 inches in this case. Now as we look at our problem, there's only one of these pads that we're working with. So if I were to take a look at a little n, like in the tension problem, the number of areas is going to be 1. Now if I really had a motor that I was working with here, that 800 pounds might be the whole weight of the motor, or in this case it might be one-fourth of the weight of that motor. So if I put the full weight on the area, this would be four times larger and then I would put the number of areas would be four. So we'll do something like that uh, on a following problem. Right now we're just going to take a look at the force acting on one particular area. So we've got our unknown, we've got our known information, we're ready to start taking a look at our solution process. As we take a look at the stress and the force, and then this information in here is going to give me the area of a hollow circle. I can start to give my basic formula 
S is equal to F divided by A. And here I want to start adding information into this formula. This is a compressive stress. There is one area, and the area is of a hollow circle. So now we can move through the area of a hollow circle is equal to pi times capital D squared minus small d squared, all divided by 4. So this information gets plugged in to our A in the, in the beginning formula. So this is what's called substitution. All of this is going into that spot in the formula. So taking a little bit of a jump, we've got S, S sub C is equal to 4F. This 4 in the denominator of a denominator will come up into the numerator divided by n, and then we have pi times the quantity capital D squared minus small d squared, and that's our next step in the formula. From here we can start uh, filling in the values. So we've got our unknown compressive stress is equal to 4 times our 800 pounds divided by n is 1, pi is a constant, and then we have uh, capital D is 4 inches squared minus small d is 1 inch squared. And that's our formula. When we run through and calculate the numbers that are here, we're going to end up with S sub C is equal to 67.906 PSI. So not a very big number. When you start taking a look at stress, we're usually figuring in the tens of thousands for the ultimate stresses for materials. So this is not very much that we're working with here. So the rubber material is going to be able to take this. There'll be a number of rubber materials that we could select from. So our fourth step is to take a look at the conclusion. And what we would do here again is, uh, is in the past is try and figure out how many decimal places does it make sense. So we're going to have 67.91 PSI. Two decimal places is fine for this type of a problem. Now this used the same documentation process, the four-part problem-solving method. Uh, we went into a little bit tougher type of an area that we're working with, and then we ran through the problem, did some transposing. Uh, I'm sorry, actually substitution in this case. We didn't have to transpose anything, and we came out with the number that we were looking for. So the next step is to actually go into other stress problems, uh, more complex geometry, more complex uh, formulas that we would have to work with. And we'll take a look at some of those in a later video.